Hello, every. Oh, the the cams are all wrong on this screen. I didn't oh, no. change this yeah. screen. <laughs> this name is not correct. Nope. Uh, all right. And then this is what happens when you change your name. I do apologize you're for that. You're me now. Guys, welcome to <laughs> Song of a Raven Lance. I'm your host, <laughs> Apollo underscore Nick. Thank you all so much for joining me, where we learn to make the fun of games be a reality. That's your uh, phrase, right? That's pretty damn okay. close. We'll all wow. allow nice. it. Well, oh, how's your week been so far? Oh, you know. <laughs> well played. Good that's job. that's hilarious because Shannon was in John's spot originally. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm moving yeah. the rest of them. Okay. Oh. Nice. Perfect. No, Merrick, stop moving cameras. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Everyone good, is good found, setup, good deliveries. Space. Thank you. All right. Um, today we are continuing uh, season one, Song of the Ravenlands, and our Dungeon World campaign. How is everyone doing today? Besides Shannon, who you know, I've already answered for both myself oh. and John, so <laughs> neither of us really needs to respond. It's totally fine. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you had to. Nick, I, I'm great. I'm ready to play. Been looking forward to this all week. Yes. Yes. having a good time yeah it's it's excellent i'm i'm really excited to see what we have in store uh i've been talking with john for a week and we've arrived at zero answers <laughs> so anything i can will never give anyone a straight <laughs> answer in my life if i can help it y'all i it, i was trying to just pull just it totally. out of him and he wouldn't give me no. anything I will analyze the situation from multiple <laughs> angles before I ever give you my take on it. Oh, boy. Uh, All right. I protect myself. I've lived a thousand lives. This is exciting. Okay. okay. <laughs> Andy, how are you? Well, sprightly. It's a Wednesday. Um, uh, for our Dozone friends, uh, I have a uh, homemade passion fruit curd thumb drop cookie going on right here. So that was a lot of words. Oh Everything you just said sounds amazing. Yep, it did sound amazing. I'm deeply jealous, and also we are enemies now. So good job, good job with that, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> who who would like to who would like to attempt to recap what what is going on right now? in the game. I nominate John. God. Oh yeah, there you go. Last week on Fable Table, we did a lot of talking, and then I murdered a man in cold blood. And that's where we left off. That's uh, it's not bad. Um, I need to restart my roll 20 because audio is of course not loading correctly. John, do you experience that issue frequently? Of what? A roll 20 when you just play a track and it just sits there not loading. I am constantly on point with my audio. Okay. It might I'm be because... changing songs manually. Yeah. Do you use the tabletop audio in roll 20 mm. or do you use something else? No, I do. I just constantly am fucking with it nonstop. I'm not even joking. Like, it's just a constant multitasking thing I have to deal with. Okay. All right, let's try Solemn Vow. Second a load. It does. Oh, that is definitely not the track I thought it was. Art. <laughs> yeah, that is that is not what we're going for. Um, hit us with some dark and stormy, Nick. That's what you should hit us with. We'll do some Lonesome West. That seems appropriate oh, okay. here. So, um, for our party, they are preparing for the uh, the Rust Brothers and their military arm, the Iron Guard, who are en route from the east. Uh, they've got an alert from Carnal, who rode um, by, um, we could say horseback, but I also haven't really been highlighting how there's lots of strange animals in the Forbidden Lands, uh, or, or the Ravenlands. Um, Let's say he arrived on like a giant lizard, and that's just their beast of burden for uh, for travel. Um, the the orcs anyway. Um, so he has arrived on lizardback and reported to the Moss family that the 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 Church of Rust is is moving in force 
um, likely due to the fact that y'all are harboring, uh, or at least were until today, a Raven sister. Um, and the Rust Brothers are due to arrive today. Um, so the City Watch and the Grave Wardens have been preparing. Um, the, uh, the Moss family has prepared a sizable um, offering of, of, you know, taxation and, and um, I don't know. What's the, what's the religious word for an offering uh, like that? A sacrifice. A tithe. Oh, yes. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And, sacrifice is dramatic. Yeah. In the hopes that uh, the Hollows can save face and deny ever having uh, sheltered or harbored a Raven sister, even though a Lalo uh, really helped y'all pull out of the uh, the winter and early spring illnesses. Um, in case that doesn't work, um, the Grave Wardens and Watch are preparing for to fight. Um, and you all have plans of your own. Um, who would like to recap what y'all are planning to do? Um, I believe the plan was to head west and go demon hunting. Mm -hmm. The demons are amassing to the southwest of the hollows, and they are beginning to become a problem, especially if they make their way north to the fields. Where okay. We have almost all of our food. Okay. And the so idea was also to go demon hunting because if the Rust Brothers are having issues, we have a telepathic link between Rick and John and uh, Wick. Right. So that we can know what's going on. He's going to send a firework up into the sky if they have need of us. And then we can maybe hit the Rust Brothers from the side where they're unsuspecting. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Um, but in the meantime, uh, Wick, Wick's final preparations was to head up into the hills to meet his mentor and friend, uh, the elf Lucerin, who has been doodling some uh, designs for some really powerful artifacts um, that he had apparently planned on placing elder rubies within um, to, to create extreme, extremely powerful artifacts. Um, and you got, you Wick, got a vision of many different figures donning these items and appearing very powerful um, as if standing over, over the Ravenlands themselves. Um, many, many figures, some known to you, others not known. Um, and in that vision, you pictured seeing yourself. And remind me, like, what was your rationale for striking yourself down? Wick. Really does not like magical items. If that was not obvious, it should be after this. Uh, the first time he ever interacted one was a ploy from who he thought were his friends, followed by a swift stabbing, and basically death. Uh, so, he knows their trouble. Everything he's ever heard of them is also kind of like, Ah oh, yes, the evil sorcerer lord, Gilglamesh summoned a bunch of magical shit and then blew up people. Mm -hmm. And Wick, seeing that people should be, you know, not blown up, is just predisposed to not liking magical items. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you see yourself wearing them, not a lot of people have that intrinsic self-hatred and guilt to go through with must be, or what must be done. Hmm. And having the opportunity to cut something at the source before it ever became a problem, saving an untold number of lives for generations to come, mm -hmm. Wix steps forward to stab himself, and his friend in the back. Yes, you have run Lucerin through with your your sword. Um, it has emerged from your body and now it's piercing through Lucerin's back. Um, there is, stepping into the scene again, a 
like just loud gasp from Lucerin, who stumbles for a moment. Um, and I need to know from you, John, um, knowing that elves within their bodies, they have these elven rubies, which is essentially their soul and, and self, um, their physical body can 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 be regrown if if the right conditions are met. Um, but otherwise, the Saren will still be alive unless his ruby is shattered. Is that what you are aiming for, or are you simply trying to destroy Would his it body? Be the heart is like in conjunction like where does it sit in a person yeah i think it would be like you know where you'd expect the heart to be but i think it is more centered well that's where he was aiming for regardless mm. okay um so you you run lucerin through he gasps loudly falls to his knees and just without seeing his face as he falls forward um he dies. There is not even a moment, I think. Uh, like, Do I hear... Does he have blood? Is his body, like, truly organic? Or does it, he just, like, shatter into just shards of red gems? Um... So you can hear, like, the cracking and crunching sound of, of the ruby within his body shattering and and as you pull your sword out you can hear it hear the the shards scraping against your sword but as you draw it out uh, i don't know if you've you've seen elves injured before um but there is no blood here um but very quickly his body begins to turn gray um and slowly become desiccated and shrivel up over the course of a minute or two I hold him, or his shell, I suppose. You can feel it withering more and more, becoming dry and volumeless, turning brittle, and eventually after a couple minutes it begins to just crumble and evaporate. Holding his back, probably where I stabbed him with a sword, do, like, shards of the ruby fall into my hands? Yes. Yes, shards of his ruby fly in your palms and fingers. Wick tightens his grasp. Brings them to his chest. Mutters something no one will ever hear. Uh, and he's gonna cry. Because although John is tearless and soulless, Wick is not. Okay. I think and that's we will... where our scene ends. Yeah, I think the camera just pans back um, as the sun is setting over Dem Hills. Um, and back in the hollows, um, the rest of you all are preparing. Um, you are expecting to meet Wick at some point um, and uh, head out towards the fields. What is ever uh, uh, Merrick, I don't think you finished your downtime action. I didn't? I don't think so. I, I was re-watching the VOD of just like the last few minutes and I made a comment about... Uh, I think you said something about like wanting to just learn, like look in the book about the Rust Brothers to see if there's anything yeah. useful in there. I was looking in the Rust Brothers, like their their ethos, the book of their ethos, to try to give Rick Wick some hints and suggestions on ways to placate them. But he seemed to say that they've kind of done that already before, mm -hmm. and he kind of knows what he's doing. He kind of brushed me off. So yes, he did. At that point, I at that point, I think I went to just gather some food, okay, to prepare for the journey. I would have communed to change my spells, but not to converse with my god. Okay. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, am I misremembering? Are the are the Rust Brothers supposed to arrive tomorrow or tonight? I don't actually recall. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. All right. 
Um, so is there any final preparation anyone wants to do throughout the evening or any scenes anyone wants to have? Um, one thing I, we, we did not mention is that uh, Dola, Mary Stone, and her husband Hogue, who is a stone singer, they are going to be leading many children and non-human folk uh, from the town into the abandoned gold mine to the north uh, and, and close the mine uh, to, to seek shelter and weather this uh, storm, uh, storm of, of, uh, of Rust's followers. Um, so uh, I think Alelo has also taken off at this point and headed, is headed south. Uh, and they are and mark that down. Yeah, they are flying. So I'm going to move a Lalo on the map as well. A la le lu le la. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think last week you in it you at one point said Alola instead of a Lalo. Yep. I appreciate the uh, sneaky Pokemon reference. So oh hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um All right, so um, the next morning comes and you all head towards the West Gate uh, to meet Wick. And Wick does not show up. Around what time are we meeting him? Um, right after dawn or? Whenever you all had agreed to, yeah, maybe right after dawn, you were, you're, you're gonna head out. Um, dawn arrives, you all are gathered, um, the city watch are, you know, hustling and bustling. People are packing their stuff into their homes, uh, and getting ready to leave with Hogue and Dola. Um, and, um, yeah, lots of preparations underway. Uh, and you all wait 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe a good hour goes by and Wick does not show up. that point, I think I would ask a company to maybe fly up to the top of the wall and see if she can look out, maybe spy him on his way. Yes. And actually, I, I take a plus one on that. Um, yes. For right. discern realities. Yeah. Let me. You're ready to mark XP. <laughs> no shit, dude. I was just thinking that. I'm like, I'm going to fuck mm -hmm. this up. Do, uh, Shannon, did you level up? Um, last I la did. I became a level five. Yeah, and I became a brewer. That's um, right. And then we we had a we had there was an exchange where I had I I did a partial on um the poison that I wanted to brew, I and I now. did not get to brew the poison I wanted to brew, so I had to brew some other poopy poison. That's right. Um. Anyway. Uh, yes, so I did. I'm a level five now, soon to be level six, <laughs> depending on how this roll goes. So. Okay. Oh, this is way too peaceful. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike and that X. I'm invisible. <laughs> you don't have eyes. Nope. She's looking to the south. I am. I'm like looking oh. in the complete opposite direction. Wherever you are, I'm looking in the other way. The fucking I don't story. see him, guys. So you you uh, get on top of the wall and are looking around. You head over by where wherever Wick lives. Um, Dem Hills. He doesn't, he doesn't live. <sighs> Surely he sleeps somewhere or lays his head down somewhere. He can't. Um. Yeah, you go to where you you know Wick's Wick's usual places. He's nowhere to be found. You fly around the whole town. And you see no sign of him. Um, you regroup with Basil Chives and Merrick uh, and report back. So what does what is the conversation about what to do next look like? How long do well, we wait, guys? Yeah. Yeah. We have a job to do. Blake knows about it. He'll find us eventually, but we can't wait here much longer. you want us to scout ahead? Does does somebody want to wait behind for Wick? Or do we just keep moving? Can I know it's not going to be me. <laughs> Where, can, can we think of anywhere else he would go? 
Oh, doesn't he have that friend who You lives have up, no idea up that about hill. Who Aaron <laughs> he never would have, never would have spoken about that ever. No, that's true. Okay. Basil met him for like 30 minutes yep. one time. Yeah. Never mind. I'll be like, I don't know. Do we do we check in at the at the um the restaurant to to at the at the kitchen to see if uh, they've seen him that morning? Uh, he wouldn't be there. Can we go? He, can we have our own little fucking Carmen San Diego side quest right now and get clues to find out where? He <laughs> you is? know, we never did discuss if Wick's mom is still around, Apollo Nick. Oh my God, that's right. Wick's mom is still around. Do you live at home, Wick? <laughs> no. You live There's with your no mama. Way. You don't live in your mom's basement. I honestly assumed you killed her off with how little we've talked about. No. <laughs> yeah, we should. We should definitely. Like, oh yes, my racist war baby is on. <laughs> Turned into a fairy boy. Yes, I'm the new character now. <laughs> Let's Please go don't. find Wick. <laughs> um, I have I have notes on her. Um, what is your relationship with your mama like these days, Wick? Uh, with amygdala. Amygdala. Is that her name? Or was it? Or was it a uh, amygdala? <laughs> No, nope, it's sure amygdala, amygdala now. It's amygdala, it's amygdala forever. Amygdala now, yeah. amygdala That's what now. I wrote down <laughs> from Jesus your Christ. paragraphs and paragraphs that you sent me when we were first planning. Paragraphs and calm down, Chief. Okay. Uh, amygdala. Holy you shit. You write 2,000 words in your sleep, man. We can all believe it. Uh, I don't know, man. Probably non existent. Mm hmm. You know, she fucked my entire life up before I was born. She sure There's did. some anger there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you're saying Wick does not have a strong connection with Amygdala? No, good, he doesn't. Not a good regulator? Okay. Not really, no. He honestly only had one Andy. friend. Mm. <laughs> Poor Wick. I got that one. Yeah. Try it. Uh, yep. It's okay, Andy. Uh, <laughs> let's check in at the kitchen and find out if there's a lead on Amygdala or Rick. Rick has a connection to him. Rick should be able to tell us exactly where he is. Yeah. Forgot about, about that. Uh, I think we go to the kitchen. Yeah, we go to the kitchen. Yeah, you head to the kitchen. You ask to speak to Rick. He is busy uh, talking to his captains and uh, coordinating. Uh, you all also get to see what Wick saw last last time that we met. Um, he is a fantastic delegator. He trusts people to do their job. He's, you know, people in the Moss family are trained really well. Uh, and he just largely gets out of their way, just brings up, you know, his concerns and and his thoughts where he thinks that, that it's appropriate. Um, and then he, of course, once he gets a free moment... Um, says, yes, uh, can you make it quick? It is uh, quite a busy day. Uh, we're getting reports that the Rust brothers should be coming over uh, past the, the watchtower of past ways any minute now. Hence the need for haste. Indeed. We cannot, lo we cannot locate Wick. We need to find him before we head out. We need to get out of town now before the Rust brothers encircle us. Is your connection still active? Um... It's hard to say. It seemed like Wick was the one in control of of turning it off and on. I can... Let me try. And he takes a minute. And he appears to just be, like, thinking intensely. I am... I am not hearing him. I have not heard him since last night. When did you well, last talk... When did you last hear from him last night? Uh, when he cast his spell on me. Okay, got it. You didn't hear anything. Eight thirty-one p.m. Yeah. <laughs> dun dun. <laughs> Law and order <laughs> sound. Oh, perfect. The twenty-four clock appears in a in the corner. It's counting down. down. Rick is farming experience. <laughs> nice, nice coffee. Uh, I'll uh, say to Rick if he shows back up looking for us. We're at the West Gate, and if we're not at the West Gate, we're on our way into the into the forest. Yes, uh, demon hunting was it? Yes. Good luck, and 
we've been seeing many, many more demons appearing over the last 24 hours. Uh, they seem to be converging around or, or coming from the area to the south near Widow's Peak. We, of course, have not had the resources to deal with this threat. One thing at a time. Sure. But, uh... Wick, can you think of anyone else Wick may have spoken to last night? We can ask about his whereabouts. No. Wick doesn't really have people to talk to. If anyone else had come asking me, I would have referred them to you. Hmm. All right, Basil, I have one last thing to try. Thank you, Rick, for your time. Good luck in the coming week. You as well. And I will lead the rest of the party outside, and then mm -hmm. Merrick will kneel down in the grass, and he will start swaying back and forth. He is going to cast one of his ropes. He's going to ask Worm for guidance. Okay. Let me May find... I cast a spell? Yeah, I'm just looking for Hey, my... God, can you help me find my friend? <laughs> oh, that's not what I'm asking of, John. Patience. Ooh, Ooh that's, oh a my God. that's a hey. 12. Hey. All right, you have cast okay. a spell. Well done. I will link guidance. And you will see Merrick kind of sways back and forth, and as he's swaying back and forth in front of him, a small spectral snake starts weaving in front of him and matching his motions back and forth. And the spell says, the symbol of your deity appears before you and gestures towards the direction or course of action your deity would have you take, then disappears. The message is through gesture only. Your communication through this spell is severely limited. So I will try to, while casting the spell, ask my deity, should we move forward? Or should okay. we wait for Wick to join us? So we haven't talked a lot about kind of like how how big and grand are the gods. Um, your, the history and lore of this world, like, that, that you all would have been like heard growing up is that the gods are largely people who walk around. Like they have walked this earth, they are the ones who made it, but they're not like omnipotent or omniscient or anything like that, um, at least most of them. For example, I think most notably um, Raven, like he, he has been known to fly around and like work with the various kin of the Ravenlands. Flo has shown up and like given the elves their stillness, which is where they can take their rubies to regrow their bodies. Um, <clears throat> Clear has been said to um, like be at Galar Hall in the past, but at some point before the, uh, the Alder Wars, most of the gods kind of just went AWOL, but Largely, they still communicate with a few people, like you, Merrick, um, and and like Gorthank was was kind of uh, an apostle of clear, um, and and Raven communicates directly with the Raven sisters, um, but so, so, or all of this to say, like what Worm knows is is basically what you know. Like you are his his boots on the ground, um, and he is not present. So basically, he just doesn't know what's going on other than what you tell him. So, in terms of the options to consider, like there is, um, there like when you do this this spell, there isn't going to be stuff. Nothing like secret is going to be revealed through this. Is what I, sure. I'm trying this, to say. This is a rope. It's, this is a rope. Yeah. It's a zero level spell. I'm not expecting answers. If I want answers, I better level up and get divination or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Does Worm care about your friends, Merrick? Mm. So here, here is what you're going to get. And Guidance is largely okay. supposed to be... Um, like it says gestural, and, and mm -hmm. it's not supposed to have a lot of clarity and context. Mm -hmm. um, you, got a, you got a divine shrug coming your way. <laughs> um, 
So you look at, uh, where, where are you when you cast this spell? I am kneeling in the grass outside the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you hear the grass rustling and there are stones that begin to move out of the earth and, and from the grass all converging into one. Uh, and they begin to form the shape of a snake. Uh, the stones rattle a little bit against one another imitating a hissing and rattling sound of a, of a rattlesnake. Uh, and they begin to move through the grass uh, and they start uh, slithering towards the south gate. We're just giving us a sign. Uh, let us go. And Merrick will stand up and he will follow the snake. But if the snake dissipates, he will move in that direction. Uh, you can follow the snake. Um, it, it will lead you completely to the south gate. And then it will it will move through the gate, which is open at this point, um, although they're, they're making preparations to close all of the gates around the city. Um, and it begins following the south path towards the Widow's Peak. Based. I think we move on. Wick will find us when he's ready. And until then, we persevere. We leave word at the gate that if Wick shows up to let him know we've headed south. Long as my team is with me, I start marking in that direction. Okay. So yeah. let's let's talk about that. Um, Merrick has suddenly pulled uh, kind of a, a hard right turn on the rest of you. What do you make of this basil and cacophony? I... <laughs> I think Cacophony knows that at this point expediency is key and that for Wick to not show, it must have been something very serious. But we also know that Wick can pretty much take care of himself. Um, even if he is mentally unstable, he's not. He's not. It, he's not. Uh, what am I trying to say? He's not weak. So he, whatever it is, we know that he'll find us eventually, I guess. But <laughs> we got to get the fuck out of there. Wick is high performing. Yes. I melted in my seat. A compliment from Cacophony? Not in my lifetime. Not so, in front of you ever. <laughs> I ever. only talk good about them behind their backs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Obviously. So Cacophony has some trust in Wick's capability. But, like, I, I guess I'm curious what do you make of Merrick's, like, oh, well, we were going to go protect the field, but now we're heading south? I thought that the gate, I thought we were heading in the southwest. We still going the same way. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You were going yeah, demon I, hunting. Didn't... I, I guess I, I conflated that with, there was some talk about protecting the fields um, to the to the east. Okay. Uh, what about you, Basil? How are you feeling about uh, this situation? Uh, I am increasingly curious about... Wor uh, worm's wisdom and, and Merrick's relationship with it, so uh, I am just going to follow along and see what this premonition is uh, is directing. And uh, likewise, I assume Wick can look after himself. Uh, also, I'm still totally confused by his moral compass, so I don't feel a lot of like <laughs> whatever he's doing must be important. I'm just kind of like, what? That guy's weird. <laughs> Fair. Okay. So I'm I'm on board. I'm maybe a little apathetic or uncertain, not apathetic, uh, unclear about what's happening. Okay. Yeah. All right. You all begin to hit the road. You've got your supplies. Um, and, and, and just out of curiosity, in what general direction are you headed? Are you heading like towards Widow's Peak? Are you just heading into the, the forest, the, the Dagger Woods? Um, what, what is the plan exactly? I think the plan was to protect the fields up here. So we'll move through the south gate and then uh, head. <clears throat> didn't, couldn't we see the demons like amassing in the sky somewhere? There has been a couple demons flying around that you all have seen over the last week or so. Um, but there there are have been like, I think as you all were coming back from the sunken mire, you saw evidence of other demons like roaming through the forest. Um, uh, in yeah. increasing number. So I okay. think the plan would be to move in this direction, if you're looking at my token. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Into the nest here. Yeah. And then into the woods to try to locate the demons, maybe scatter them, maybe disperse them, maybe find their source, hoping that Wick at some point is able to catch up before we engage them in a pitch battle. Okay. Because Merrick we... always following his god and his sign. He's a little scared to be engaging things without our fighter. Yeah. Yeah. So will we be uh, is there oh, no. are, is there tree cover where we're going or like just based on like what I'm looking at like we're pretty out in the open like just on the map or is this like theater of the mind and we're in the trees? Um there there is definitely both like which whichever kind of areas you all want to focus on like if you want to okay. be out in the open and just like keeping keeping like good eyes open for far distances you can be out in the field looking around or if you'd like to have cover in the forest um, and try to use that to your advantage as you search. I I'm fine with either. We can theater of the mind, either one. Thank you. Okay. Uh, but Merrick, to be clear, your your uh, guidance snake is heading straight south towards Widow's Peak. Um, and and you, so at one point you would have had to like deviate away from the path that worm was guiding you along uh to head into the forest so um let's just make note of that let's switch back over to wick here uh, and we will catch up with you all when the action picks picks up in your search for demons so um wick you are grieving over the body of your mentor and friend, Lucerin. Oh, is it still the night? It is we... still the night. This would appear to be, from the camera's view, a flashback. Um, you are weeping uh, as your, your mentor and friend's body decays and decays and, and eventually it is gone and all that is left are these rubies in your hand. Uh, what is your like gr immediate grieving process like? Or is there is there a picture you want to paint for us, John? You know those like <laughs> terrible, awful, like I am physically ill cries mm. and like you're chest is compulsing almost and your lungs are constricting your heart yeah it's like that it's awful he's fever he's just snotty just fine <laughs> just making weird noises of never having made this and then holding the rubies in his hand his friend fully snapped by thanos he looks up at the crown that was wait was it ever made i don't think he ever he, made he it. had not made it he was preparing to and then you told him not to start his forge because the rust brothers might be able to see it up here in the hills and come looking for him so all of the designs are laid out in his notebook in like pristine detail uh there's also notes on the the magic patterns those those constellation geometric patterns that he described having learned about from lyrica the elder ruby the the elf here that that whose giant ruby is also sitting next to the journal on the table uh i or, think he's or... gonna go through the cycles of grief in a uh, mixed order mm -hmm. so we're gonna start with rage uh i think that's like one of the last ones Hang on, let me let me actually pull it up. Uh, steps. Well, of what? There's What's no up? there's no real order. It's just. Uh, well, he's already accepted it, so we started with a back. <laughs> so now it's just anger, I guess. He's gonna destroy with his sword the interior of the workshop, smashing everything he can, trying to avoid. Uh, the rubies that did not have this coming to them. Uh, so he's going to stab and cut the book of patterns. He's going to destroy what little tea set was left. Uh, well, now has probably cooled off. Or was already cold? I can't remember. But yeah, smashes the porcelain. Goes to the forge. Shatters the anvil. Just in fury. Until at last he comes to the greater ruby. 
staring at it. Mm-hmm. Seeing his own reflection. He drops the sword. Fuck, he can't just put down Lucerne. He has to go plant him somewhere. He doesn't know how elves rege- like reproduce. He heard somewhere that you plant them like potato seeds. <sighs> he doesn't know if this is real. Uh, yeah. He has to yeah, make you've sure de- Lucerne's you definitely... descendant. <laughs> You've definitely heard that, and, like, now that you're faced with, like, I have ruby shards, like, is that just, like, uh, some, like, a fairy tale? Is that, like, is yeah, that just a like, rumor? Like, where did I hear fuck? that? Is that is that how it's done? Mm-hmm. Um, I you're... think he will, like, talk to himself in the reflection of the giant elder ruby for a moment. And just, like, continuously almost agree with himself. Like, yeah, this is your fault. You did this. This is your fault. And just, like, force himself to stare at himself. Which is something he doesn't like to do very much. Mm. Yeah, your pale skin in the reflection. What, like... Since you are you are forced to consume this thing and your transformation, like, are you just pale and white, uh, like white hair, or is there other? No, like, he lost dis- like seventy percent of his muscle mass. Mm. He's more or less a weird hybrid between elf, fairy, and human. Uh, although he has more youngerish features from when he was an older, you know, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Now he's just, like, this diminutive thing that's just getting by purely by dodging for most of them. (laughs) Just, like, ah, it's infuriating to him. He used to be strong and bold and muscular. He had hair on his chest. Now he can't even cut his hair because it's made seemingly out of iron. It's rather terrible. And if the ruby doesn't start talking back, he's going to go throw it into a chest, probably with all the other ones, mm-hmm. so that he can think of something to do here. <laughs> um, at some point, as you're placing all of the elven rubies back in the chest, um, Lucerian's shards sit on the desk, and you eventually return to those. Um, and as you look over them and contemplate, like what planting them would look like uh, in uh, consistent fashion with Lucerin showing up and surprising you uh, in his home uh, there is suddenly a figure standing there in the room with you it is From one of like the behind me <laughs> um no I don't think they've snuck up on you I think you just look up and and they are in front of you um, yeah, what or, or off to the side. Uh, this is one of the figures that you would recognize from your vision. It is, in fact, the hooded figure with pale skin, very similar to yours. Uh, we would recognize, uh, we the viewers of this, of the HBO special of this show, would recognize this is the figure from Merrick's vision. Uh, this is Vale. You cannot I stare see at this their face. figure. Yeah, it's nighttime anyway. Yes. Uh, And I think there's a moment that catches your attention uh, as the shadows get really long for a second. And you you begin to look around the room and suddenly he's over there, like, by Lucerin's bed. Um, And he is standing in the room and the shadows begin to slowly return in place. Uh, His face is covered by deep darkness and you cannot make it out. Um, but he slowly, like, walks uh, to the side, looking around the room, and he says, You have killed Lucerin. Why? Uh, okay. <laughs> 
White needs to discern realities, man, because he's either about to pop off on some B and E piece of shit who he doesn't recognize as a guy, uh, or I don't know, man. Yeah, you can take a moment to study study Vale. Yeah, we're we're gonna study him, Chief. Uh, we do not have okay. Please, I have failed every wisdom roll. Taught me some. That's a six or that, a partial. That's success. a partial success. You there get you one go. question and get to take plus one forward when acting on the answers. You can ask what happened here recently. What is about to happen? What should I be on the lookout for? What here is useful or valuable to me? Who is really in control here? And what here is not what it appears to be. Oh, what is about to happen, Nick? <laughs> Um, I about to get backhanded by fucking Juicy Jesus over here. <laughs> juicy Jesus, oh my god. Uh, Vale does not appear to be armed with any sort of weapons. Um, he well, That's a mistake. <laughs> he also um, doesn't appear to be threatening you in any way. Um, he is just studying the room and, and looking at you. Uh, I mean, from what you can tell, you can't actually see any facial features, so it, it's the a little... The hood twist. But he's just slowly um, and patiently, with interest, just kind of taking things in. He does not appear to be concerned uh, or or aggressive in any way. Um, he, ha he has not shown any hostility to you. So a conversation is what's about to happen. Okay. Uh, slowly stepping, you know, you know when the fighter is like doing his like weird positioning thing, mm -hmm. and he's like slowly moving into a different location to make a clear path between him and his potential threat. Mm -hmm. He goes to his sword so that he can kick it up into his hands if he needs to. Did it not return into your body when after you struck down Lucerian, you just oh. dropped it? Probably, yeah. Okay. I would have. That's normally. Um, All right, well, never mind. Not. <laughs> John wanted to be a cool samurai for a second there. Um, I mean, it can be wherever you want it to be. I'm. No, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Oh, what's Wick's voice? I already forgot it. It's basically creature, isn't it? <laughs> um. Okay. What was the last thing he asked? Like. Why did I do it? Yes. Why'd you kill Lucerin? You've killed Lucerin, the elf. Why? He was your friend, was he not? Yes. He, he saved was. you. Talked you off a ledge at one point. He when, did. When you when you thought your life had no purpose. Yeah. And yet, you took his life. Yeah. It is a curious thing, and I do not understand. Tell me, why did you do this? You ever have that, uh, what do you call it, intuition? Or you know something really bad is going to happen if you don't do something? Yes. What did your intuition tell you would happen? If you did not wow. kill this man? A lot of bad. A lot of harm will come to this world. That's it. A lot of harm will come to this world regardless of what you do. Regardless Maybe. of what Lucerin was going to make. That's not what it's about. Death will come for us all in the end. But while we're here, 
I am obligated. I have a responsibility to ensure that those who live in peace can remain in peace. Yes, but that's not the world your gods made. Peace is and... controlled by those with power. And there are many who are too weak to keep peace for themselves. That is what motivates you, isn't it? This thirst to protect those who cannot protect themselves. Something like that. Hmm. Come, let me, let me tell you about myself. I have neglected to introduce who I am to you. It looks like before he perished, Lucerne made some tea. Would you pour us a cup? I look at the broken cups and just wonder if this fucking guy is blind as hell. <laughs> Do you have eyes? Hmm, <laughs> I see. I see. You wish me to pour cold brew into your flap there it was Do more for you. face it was more for you come sit and he gestures to uh the seat in front of the desk with all of the it's just the desk is just destroyed oh yes in the chair with two and a half legs why don't we stand like adults hmm um, uh, Nick, tell me if he ever turns his fucking back on me. <laughs> no, he will not. <laughs> okay. Um, That's probably a good idea. Um, he is going to have a very interesting conversation with you, Wick. Um, oh, he yeah. is going to introduce himself as Vale, uh, one of the siblings of, of the gods of your world. And he is very... Very particular about, like, describing himself that way. Like, a sibling of a god of your world. He does not, he does not claim to be a god of your world. Um, and... Do you know Rust? I gotta know. Do you know my boy Rust? Your boy Rust. Why, yes. We go way back. Are you able to contact him for, like, five minutes? At least pass a message on... What would you have me say to Rust? Uh, his boys are uh, misinterpreting his words here, and uh, they need a beatdown. Rust is always quick to violence and to solve, solve his problems, solve things he doesn't understand by destroying them. Uh, does he look away like you just did? <laughs> did uh, like yeah, him? yeah. There's a moment where he kind of like looks off to the side. Fuck. <laughs> All right, you you make a move. I launch forward and shout. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, this is why we narrate before what we're doing before we roll because rolls can trigger moves. Or, or I'm sorry. Just, uh, narrative can trigger moves, but there is no opportunity to actually roll here, John. Uh, oh, because as damn. you draw your blade uh, and and do you, like thrust or or slash at him, uh, he just waves his hand and it disappears. It goes back uh, into your body. That's fine. As long as he stop, <laughs> if he's not stopping me from moving, I'm just gonna attack him with my teeth if I have to. Um, you discover that, um, he is not physically present. He's incorporeal. Okay. Yes. Uh, he says, I, uh, Wick. I'm not done yet. I pull out the black nail. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can do, like, whatever oh, you want. Not even death can touch him? Fuck. He is not here. This is an oh. avatar. Um, he oh, is, he is not physically present here. Please, please. There is no need for this. I throw a chair in anger. Fuck! <sighs> oh, Wick. This world is broken. 
and I can see so are you. Do you have eyes? Of course I have eyes. I can see everything happening in this room. And I can see all of my plans shattered like Lucerne's ruby. God, now I actually take a seat. I flip the broken chair over. I collapse coolly on the back end, probably falling in the process. You've been lost and wandering around looking for your purpose, looking to matter since you nearly died at the hands of the Rust Brothers. No. I think you have. Well, you're delusional, I guess. It'd be pretty on point with uh, your other boys. What was his name? Uh, what was that guy's name? Who was the guy I tried to save from being executed? Uh, Kavon? Kavon, yes. Kevin with the O. <laughs> you even know Kavon? Of, of course. I know. You know Kavon? <laughs> I know all my servants. And I know you, Wick. I am the one who gave you your second chance, after all. Oh, you dumb fuck. <laughs> you have made a massive mistake. How dare you? Um, and I think there is a moment where you flash back to the moment where you're, you were bleeding out after the Rust Brothers left you for dead, and there's a hooded figure standing over you, forcing some strange small creature down your throat. Yeah. Which propagated your transformation, and that hooded figure is now standing. Does that mean you. he was actually there when he force-fed it to me? Maybe. Uh-oh. Okay, well. All right, what's the, what's the deal here, bud? Give us your pitch. Let's hear it. I have no pitch for you, Wick. I... No, you're just coming to mock me. No. I saw you considering planting these rubies and wanted to share some insight with you. For many, many years, I have been planting seeds and watering them. Lucerin was one of those seeds. You and your transformation. I laugh at him. Another. And I find Plans it sure do backfire, don't they? Well, the thing is, Wick, plant seeds and water them. And my siblings, they would say, and flowers will grow. Something intentional, something by design, like this world designed the way they wanted to. But I've always been of the opinion, water it and something will grow. And I find that to be the most interesting thing. I'm not here to ask anything of you or send you in any particular direction, just to try and understand what is growing in your mind and within you. Uh, and with a sweeping hand, he like, like reaches gestures towards you and then like pulls his hand away and your blade like just sticks out of your chest. Uh, <laughs> And he begins to examine it um, and, and experiment with it a little bit. Like, he begins to, like, do some weird manipulative shit. Uh, and you see um, what I will describe as little branches stemming out from the blade. Ah. And then he just pushes, pushes it all right back in you. Ah. That will do finally. Ah. Uh. Well, Wick, it was very interesting to meet you. Again. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will do many wondrous things. You... Not with that attitude. Uh, so, <laughs> while he's staring at me, 
Does he know what this black nail is or does? Uh, maybe. Maybe. What happens if you stab it into a living person? Will it just sit there until that person becomes a corpse? I don't think we've ever actually narrated what this what that thing does for our viewers. Would you like to? Sure. So you've you've articulated many times how you know what this thing does. Um, it is uh, there is a magic item. I don't actually remember the name of it. Um, but uh, for you, Shannon, because I know you've been dying to hear what this thing does. Um, when you sh drive it into um, someone or something that has died, they cannot be reanimated. It is the perfect tool to prevent undeath. Or from ever coming back, right? Yeah. You can't be resurrected either. That's correct. Yeah. But so. you have to stab it into something. Yes. And but Veil's not there. Okay. Um yeah. Yep. Okay. Um All right. Uh anything else you want to say to Veil, Wick? Uh No, I think having his entire internal organ system that is melded into a sword uh <laughs> being pulled out and then pushed back in is kind of a weird feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know. Fair enough. He has ideas now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we will we will come back to you um, after after some action with some demons or something else uh, in the forest here. Um, time has been moving very differently for you. That's how it works usually. Okay. So, uh, for the rest of you, um, as you're heading into the forest to go demon hunting, um, I need I, I need some rolls here. I'm trying to decide what to do. Um. Uh, could I hunt hunt and track? some demons is that a move you have it is a move i have great yeah can you link I that think... for us and and make your yeah. roll i guess more that okay. is a five <laughs> all right when you follow a trail of clues left behind by passing creatures roll you rolled a five go ahead and mark xp andy yay okay so you all head into the forest um and you are finding lots and lots of tracks of demons um but what you're finding is that they are very erratic uh and they seem to um cross with one another um and in fact there are there is evidence of demons fighting one another here in in fact you will come across some demon corpses Demons have been known to do this on occasion. Um, but, and you find a couple bodies, um, but there are, there are still large numbers of demons. And you all spend the better part of the day like looking for demons and, and there is the occasional sighting of something like flying way up above. You might try and take a pot shot at it or use some magic or, or cacophony might even try and fly after one and engage it. And largely demons are just going to leave you all alone. Um, or, or run away uh, if you come upon any. Uh, so you all have actually quite an unsuccessful day of demon hunting. Um, and by late afternoon, you all have like a decision to make as things are just not going your way. Um, so, um, Wick has still not shown up and the demon hunting is not going well. Um, and you would get, guess that by now the Rust brothers have shown up because they were supposed to arrive today. Um, so 
the hollows might be under threat right now. I look to the sky. Do I see any fireworks flying? Uh, so the plan was that if if they need your help, they're going to shoot a firework? Yeah. Ooh. Maybe. Yes. Um, I think I think that that's the moment we zoom in on here. Um, you all, as as the sun is beginning uh, to to set over the hills again, you know, about twenty four hours after Wick witnessed the death of his mentor, um, and when Vale appeared, uh, you all see a firework over the hollows. Uh, and there is um, one explosion in the sky. Um, uh, I don't know what color it would be, and I don't know if it matters. It would be smoke if it's day. Yeah. I think Merrick's head will pop up, look around as soon as he sees it, try to get everybody else's attention, look around, make sure there's no demons right around us, and be like, oh, this is in trouble. That was a signal. We should head back now. Plus, if Wick's ever going to meet up with us, this is the time. We'll we see have a we have, we have a position to the west. I say we head south of the town and then skirt that way until we see the Rust Brother encampments and see what's going on. Maybe get a good look and then decide from there. Sounds good. Okay. Nestle, right. lead the way. Leading. Okay. Um, I am going to need a discern realities from another discern realities from someone as you all approach the hollows. I got you. No, I'm kidding. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Blue. Oh, oh my thank perfect. Christ. Okay. Uh. All right. So, um, I'd like to reality. To quickly switch over to Wick as well. Wick, you uh, eventually, after Vale disappears. Oh out of the house <laughs> you step out of the house what what did you quickly what did you do with lucerian's rubies like are you taking those with you or did you leave those in the chest as well uh i wanted to bury those in the ground okay if, uh, probably in the creek that uh i would pan for gold with him in. Mm. you step out of the hut uh, with the ruby shards in your pocket or, or in your hand, uh, and you see the firework over the hollows exploding. Uh, that's the signal, and you, you seem to have lost track of a lot of time. Uh, um, it makes sense. Do, <laughs> do I still have the telepathic link? So here's the thing, John. You failed that roll. You failed on the spell... Oh role to to establish the telepathic bond and i said that it established anyway um here's the mm -hmm. thing that that connection has been cut oh okay you cannot speak with wick or uh with rick that makes sense i just got beat the hell out of and sent into the alternate dimension of time and space mm. uh do i take xp <laughs> no i'm <laughs> <laughs> oh the green uh okay I will start heading that way. Okay. Pick some dirt in the, you know, make a hole, dump the rubies, say sorry, bud, one last time. Uh, and I hope if there's an afterlife for him that uh, he will curse me for all of his eternity, I suppose. And I think that's you what he should do being a being a shovel knight. I think you make quick work of that. It's just like one scoop rubies in had it down. May you grow into beautiful non genocidal people. <laughs> All right. And then you start making your way down from Dem Hills. Now, I'm on the war path. Now, for the rest of you, you all. Um, made quite a bit of a hike out to the hollows and so it's going to take a little bit of time to get back um you know maybe okay. maybe an uh, 45 minutes to an hour after the firework gets set off so um mm. we we may be in for some crazy crazy uh crazy stuff when we when we get in there 
Um, I think this is a good spot to take our break um, before we we see how the halls is doing. Um, so we will be right back. Okay, here we go. We're we're back with Fable Table, Song of the Ravenlands. Um, I just learned that James Spader was the actor who played Daniel Jackson in the original Stargate film, and my mind is fucking blown. So thank you, thank you, Brian, for schooling oh, yeah. me. Actually, unbelievable. Um, I don't even like Stargate, and I knew that. It's a great movie. You don't like Stargate? You're dead to me. I don't yeah, see. This I is agree. why we can't be friends. Right here. I agree. Mm. Mm. All it's right. Okay. The real question is, what does it's Basil see with his fourteen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah I got so some fucking reality to discern. I think um, as you all emerge from the forest. Oh shit! What? Um, <laughs> and begin crossing uh, the field. You all see what Wick is seeing. But Wick is seeing a lot more of the bigger picture of what is happening uh, in the hollows because he's up in the hills and and can kind of see small figures um, dotting around the entire hollows and within. So as you all emerge from the forest, you all can see a little bit of this. And what I have on the map here, uh, which I will now show to the audience, um, there there is just a wall of undead wrapping around the hollows like as far as you can see like they're i mean they are they are spread out in like little pockets but like the hollows is surrounded and under siege at this point um there are many 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 undead uh wick you can see um to the east over um oh let me let me grab an art uh, watching my l5 c yeah, no. let me grab a token really quick. They're bleeding. <laughs> um, you can see off to the east, and I, I need to resize a, um, a token really quick, so don't freak out too much. Um, nope, that's the wrong token. That's a rat! I saw it. You did see a rat. Uh, that was not the asset I meant to copy and paste from this other. There we go. Uh, well, from up in the hills, uh, inside the hollows, you can in fact see uh, some sort of demon in the shape of of a rat. Uh, but it's not a rat exactly. It's more it's of a rat. <laughs> it's more of a vole. Oh. Um, <laughs> yep. You asked. You brought it up. You brought it up last week, and I said there might be. Uh, uh, so you, what you see, Wick? Um, is there's there's some some strange terrain stuff happening in the hollows. Um, there is a giant hole outside the west gate, and I don't know why it hasn't shown up. Ah, oh, there it is. There is also a hole in the middle of the hollows, and there appears to be a large number of Rust Brothers and undead um, in the hollows. Uh, there is a lot of fighting going on between the Grave Wardens and the City Guard and the Rust Brothers and their undead legion. Um, there also appear to be a couple of these vol demons or, or mounts or whatever they are um, inside of the city, also engaged in combat. Now, uh, Basil, Andy, you rolled a 14 on your discern realities. Great job. Uh, so you get to ask three of these questions that you and the party get to take plus one forward when acting on the answers. Um, I read all of the questions earlier. Um, what are you thinking? Uh- what is about to happen? So, yeah. So, a lot has apparently happened throughout the day that you all were not here and that Wick was off doing something else doing. Um, what is about to happen is the city is about to fall. There, There is a... There is such an invasion force that they can afford to leave undead surrounding the town. Um, I don't. You, from your vantage point, cannot see what's happening inside the city, but you can see that it is surrounded. Uh, and they don't appear to be like the these forces 
around the perimeter don't appear to be doing anything but just standing watch. So is the town is the town being sacked, or is it just yes? Like they're just fighting people. Okay, they're destroying like buildings and. Oh well, in that sense, yeah. no. They but they are they are intending to take control of the city. Okay. Uh, who's really in control here? Uh, are, bud. I would you say are. the the Rust Brothers are, like they are in control of of the perimeter of the town. Uh, if somehow the Grave Wardens can fight back the forces on the inside, um, they still have to deal with this blockade. So, you know, things like getting food and supplies, some of the things that you all were concerned about, the demons interfering with, like they have brought a huge amount of forces from seemingly nowhere. Like, Carnal did not mention anything about this number of undead forces. Some Something else has gone on. Um, but you also are in control because you have not been spotted. There you go. That's something. But um, there is quite a bit of distance between you all and the hollows, so you might you might get spotted. Uh, oh, the sun yeah. hasn't gone completely down yet. What should I be on the lookout for? Um, you should be on. What should you? Hmm, what should you be on the lookout for? Um, interspersed among the many many undead uh, are an occasional rust brother. Uh, standing amid the undead. So, for example, here I have Brother B Bronze. Uh, just imagine, like, this number of forces, they are just, like, peppered around, like, the entire perimeter of the hollows, as far as you can see. And there is one or two Rust Brothers in each group. Because um, it's not a continuous wall, it's kind of like there is a squad, and then a squad, and then a squad. Um, and this is the closest squad to you all. Um, but something else that you should be on the lookout for is that some of these undead do not appear to be the classic just zombies, uh, animated undead that are very weak. Uh, there are what appear to be soldiers of the Alder Wars from mausoleums who have been reanimated with their weapons. And their um, posture seems to be a lot more intentional and strategic uh, like trained soldiers are. So there are aberrant undead kind of mixed in here. Um, there are dwarves, there are selkie, uh, there, is, there are even wolfkin undead, I'll point one out here. Uh, but those are all of the ones with, um, with those sword icons. Those are these strange, like armored up with weapons undead. Whereas normally undead don't know how to wield and use weapons. They just are kind of pathetic so something something unusual and unseen before at least from what you've heard from wick and other grave wardens is going on sorry i'm reading through the undead legions section of our resources book um Wick is creeping. All right. Uh, I think that's the end of my uh, discern realities. Um, you said they're not aware of us yet? Not yet. But uh, the sun I has not call... gone down yet. Uh, great. Um, I'm going to knock a, a bloodweed arrow and, and take a called, shot, called headshot on Brother Bronze. Okay. Um, I mean, you do damage, right? You don't just stun him like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Those are two different things I think we're thinking of. Uh, Cold Shot cold. deals damage on a success roll. Uh, on a partial success, it does a stunning nothing. Right. Okay, so um, 
I tried to be articulate about the fact that there's this huge kind of wide open field between the, for the tree line and where all the Rust Brothers are. So I'm going to need you all to, to close the distance before taking this shot. Uh, oh, it's not that close. Okay, yeah. got it. They, they, there is a chance they might spot you, and they would not be surprised and defenseless against your shot. Um, so you have a couple options. You note that the sun is going down soon, and you could use the cover of darkness uh, to basically guarantee it, but that would mean waiting. Um and, and not acting for a while. Or um, you all can try and like use the terrain to your advantage. There is some slightly rolling hills. Uh, take a little bit of extra time to kind of maneuver that way and use, use the, some blind spots to your advantage. Or you could just bum rush um, and try and close the distance before they, have a, before they spot you, hoping that they keep their eyes on the hollows and not you approaching. How would you all like to approach? You're muted, Shadow. I say we move in. And let Basil take a shot at the Rust Brother and see if we can draw some of the undead to us. Mm -hmm. And then retreat back if we can to avoid getting <laughs> surrounded and see if we can create the distraction that allows something else to happen. Stay close to the tree line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you want to intentionally draw their attention. Yeah. But if we can sneak up to get a yeah. first shot. Yeah. We want to get the first shot, but then we want yeah. to draw their attention. Okay. And pull them away. So I named a couple ways you could try and sneak up. Um, and that just kind of frames uh, the, the role. Um, is there a particular tactic you'd like to use, Basil? Uh, I mean, time is of the essence here. So not bum rush, but like I feel like we would just move up quickly using Basil, Basil's natural sense of, you know, natural camouflage and topography. <laughs> Red light, green light, it. Yes. And, okay. Uh, and 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 Chives as well can help him with that. Chives can move, you know, in They're sync higher. with him. And... Okay. You gonna you gonna have me defy danger? Yes, I would like a defy danger since you're trying to to use your wittiness, um, a wisdom, defy danger wisdom, please. Argue for intelligence. <laughs> they are going to be the same role either way. Oh. Okay. Wait a second. You have plus Can one I... forward when. It... Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, so that should be a 10. Okay, sure. so, so you do yes. it. Uh, you do what you set out to do. The threat doesn't come to bear. So you're able to uh, use your natural ability to camouflage in the natural environment. Uh, you know, when, the, when it looks like the Rust Brothers or some of these more aware uh, and intelligent undead are looking around, you, you know, you use those opportunities to camo and then creep up. Um, but also trying to balance doing this quickly. Uh, and you get into position to take your called shot. So go go ahead and make that roll. Uh, are there any spells that you want to be casting? Uh, Merrick, Cacophony, any, anything that you want to be doing to prepare? I'm ready my crossbow. Okay. I want to cast Magic Weapon on his bow. Fantastic. Nice. Go ahead. Eight. The spell. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. The spell is cast, but choose one. You draw unwelcome attention to yourself, putting yourself in a spot. You're casting distances you from your deity. Take minus one ongoing to cast a spell until the next time you commune. Or after you cast it, the spell is revoked. You cannot cast the spell again until you've communed and had it granted to you. I think I'm going to let this one be revoked. Okay. All right. Then go ahead, go ahead and link, link that magic Okay, so, uh, Andy, the weapon you hold deals an extra 1d4 damage until the spell is dismissed. Um, Merrick is taking minus one ongoing to cast future spells, but has the talent Serenity and ignores the first time that, that he gets this penalty. Nice. Great. Yep. That's fucking called shot with, some, with a bloodweed arrow. Uh, boop. Okay, I'm another Ew. 10. Damn. All right, so Brother Bronze is just looking the other way. Um, 
And you can't see any particularly interesting features at this distance of Brother Bronze, but as you know, Rust Brothers oftentimes have extra appendages or features. Sometimes they're fused with demons uh, as a part of their initiation rituals. They are transformed. Lots of transformation this season. So uh, go ahead and roll your, your class damage uh, and then an extra d4 for your uh, magic weapon. That is seven damage. And bloodweed. Ah, yes. Can you link the bloodweed for me? That that means they have uh, penalties to their damage, right? The target takes uh, minus 1d4 to damage rolls. Ongoing. Ongoing. Okay. I will put... Ah, blood. Bloodweed. There's a good good marker for this uh so you strike brother bronze in the back for seven damage in the head uh do you have any piercing does yeah, your no, oh, he does not i don't think so okay uh the only one. brother bronze lets out a cry um and immediately several of the undead like rush to his side uh some of these soldier uh, undead wielding shields are now blocking him um and he like gather takes a moment to gather himself um and he whips his head around and looking between the undead uh that are now blocking him uh he is looking around for you all and it takes him a moment uh to to see that you all are there and he the camera sees him like grit his teeth uh, and like look back at the hollows for a moment, uh, and then he has to make a decision about whether or not to pursue you all. Um, there is there is a moment here where he is he is not acting and hesitating. Gopany. Uh, I'm gonna shoot my crossbow. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna shoot my crossbow at him. What is the range of a crossbow? That's a good question. Should be near. It is near. Okay. Have you gotten into a near position? I was gonna say, uh, don't just take out some undead nearby. That's true. If you shoot with a bow, you should be able to shoot with a crossbow, right? Unless a bow has better range. A bow it? has far. Oh. Yeah, the hunter's bow is far, near and far. So then I, I want to take out one of these fellas here with the swords. Okay. Give I'll me, take out the guy on the edge. Give me a volley, please. Sure. If I can't, if I can't get to one of the rest brothers, then I'm definitely gonna try and take out somebody who can fuck us up. I'm scared. Yep, that's cool. a that good reason miss. to be scared. Mark, it's a great XP. reason to be. Level six, I'm coming for you. Okay. You fire an arrow. Um, I think it, it hits, but it just, like, breaks off a rib that just falls to the ground, and the undead just, like, looks down at it and then looks up. Uh, and then Bronze, uh, commands all of the undead in, under his control to charge forward. Oh. Uh, except for these two that are covering him. Uh, so all the undead are gonna begin rushing forward. And we're gonna fuck off, I think. Uh, head back towards the tree lines, no? Yeah. Yep, we move back towards Rama the tree way. line. Merrick will put himself between the undead and his party members so they can keep shooting if they start rushing up close. Okay. Um, who would like to lead a group action to rush back towards the tree line as the Wolfkin undead just is sprinting ahead of all of the other undead uh, mm -hmm. and is going to likely be the first to close with you? Um, their speed is way faster than the rest of you, unless Cacophony, you are flying. How many Wolfkin undead are chasing us? Just the one. Oh, shit. I will, I'll yell out, let's turn and face it. And I would like to put myself in its path and then prepare to strike it as it comes up to me. Okay. What does my team do? Uh, Basil will take a knee and uh, take aim with the bow to fire right alongside you. Okay. Uh, 
I'm gonna cacophony is gonna be like on the opposite side, but with her daggers, her her poison daggers, waiting, um, and possibly ready to <laughs> to fly off if she has to. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move us around the map a little bit just so I can extrapolate sure. the distance. We can kind of see some more clear positioning. So demons rushing, or uh, not demons, undead rushing forward. Brother Bronze in the back. Uh, this Wolfkin Undead just absolutely rushing forward ahead of everyone else. Uh, and then, Merrick, you said you were going to take the lead here? Yep. And then, uh, uh, where where are the rest of you in relation to Merrick? Perfect. Um, I'm just, yeah. Go ahead I and would move say yourself I'm if you maybe, like. Maybe on the other side, like in the tree line, but like still on, like, on his opposite side so that I can hide myself, but aid him. So um, if you all want to make it to the tree line first, I'm going to need a defy danger to uh, like dexterity to, to rush. Uh, I'm going okay. to say that the tree line is, um, is is still like it's back here to the south. I, I, I've drawn a Didn't green Didn't we say we, we stopped and turned around? Oh, yeah. Trying to run all the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I know it's getting confusing because we have, like, the world map underneath our regular map. Then I'm going to so, be not in the tree line. Okay. I'll be beside Chives. Okay. All right. Um... All right, so the Wolfkin uh, rushes forward and goes to, to close with Merrick... Uh, who who initiated this turnaround to mm -hmm. fight? So Merrick, are you defending? Or are you attacking back? I'm attacking back. We're gonna try to kill this thing as quickly as possible. All right. The wolfkin just comes galloping up and it leaps into the air. Its big claws coming down to bear against you. Give me your hack and slash. I'll meet it with my axe and miss. Uh, it just totally like. Like, it's just sheer momentum and size, like, push through, um, and it's going to hit you for quite a bit. Let's see here. No. Um... Guys, if you get Mara killed. Oh, no. Right? Oh, no. All my dice are downstairs in my bag. I had a D&D &D session this weekend. I'm just going to roll their damage here for everyone to see. Nice. Um... Uh, so that will be five damage. With, minus armor? Uh, minus uh, minus armor, but it has two piercing. So I'll just take five damage then, because I, I, I have two armor. Okay. Okay. Um, Merrick is now, like, flat on his back. Uh, the wolfkin tearing into him. What are the rest of you doing? I'm going to uh, charge the wolfkin. I... I was gonna say Chives would join you in the charge, and uh, and I'll fire an arrow just over Chives' shoulder. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna charge the Wolfkin with my talons, nice. and um, I'm gonna try and like just slash and tear at its eyes. I don't I don't know. It's it's not alive. So I'm just gonna try and do damage. Yeah, give me your hack and slash, please. That's a nine. Deal your damage to the enemy, and the enemy makes an attack at you. Okay. All right. Good. You stab into the wolfkin, who just, like, rends you with a backhand for four damage. Um, I, I don't think your armor applies, because it pierces for two. Um, but you've got, you've got okay. a good stab in, um, and one of its arms just goes limp. Oh. I did it. Um, okay. Oops. And then Basil. Yeah, and Bat. Yeah, your shot comes in right as Cacophony gets like hit off to the side. And and, and Chives runs into the Wolfkin. Nice. Do I? Uh, what am I rolling for that? Uh, volley, please. A volley. Okay. Nice. And does that include Chives? So... Chives will add one attack, or oh, will totally. add ferocity to his damage. Okay. Um, but this is also this bow is still magical, so I think it it has. Uh, oh no, it's just uh, plus damage. Yeah, it's plus one d four damage. Okay. So deal this, your damage, but choose one. This doesn't count as part of my discern realities. Uh, 
plus one going forward? No. Okay. Damn. All right, uh, choose one. You have to move to get the shot. Uh, you have to take the damage you can get. Uh, take several shot. I'll reduce my ammo by one. Okay, sounds good. Are these just regular arrows you're using here? Yeah, yeah, this is just a regular guy. Okay. So I will decrease one arrow. All right, so go ahead and roll your damage. Add one for chives and then roll 1d4 additional. There's my damage, so he does nice. nine. Nice. And then magic damage four. Oh! Wow. Give me a, give That's me a 13. 13, 13 damage. Head off. Please That's tell me. He killed damage. him in one hit. <laughs> yeah, actually, this would have been enough to kill it in one hit. Uh, you just, yeah. your nice. arrow just, I think it just kind of like goes right dead center into the chest of the wolfkin, but the arrow, like only the feathers are sticking out. It has dug in deep and you just see the wolfkin just like fall down. You have disconnected something inside. Nice. And this wolfkin is dead. I will and shrug they you off. Escape and get up and start running for the tree line. How close are the rest of the undead? Yeah, they're the they are still charging in. Oh god. Um that uh this this has not been enough time for them to catch up. Okay. okay. Uh so yeah, we're going to retreat they move to the tree line and see if we can try to move and shoot and move and shoot, I think. Okay. Yeah. Some off on the way before we get to looking maybe for a choke point or I can put myself in front and everybody else can put themselves behind. Way behind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. We're like, um, we're gonna miss you, Mary. So, and as, then we're just like hauling ass. Yeah, as you make it to the tree line, um, you can see uh, maybe those of you with more like ranged focus, uh, you know, maybe Cacophony and Basil specifically, um, you see the undead closing, but you also see back behind those undead protecting and Brother Bronze has kind of like, composed himself and stood up uh, and it looks like he's casting a spell. Ah, uh, ball sack. Wonderful. Nick, like where am I? John, we will we will get to you in a, in a bit, buddy. You are you are on the complete like opposite side of the hollows from here. Been an hour. I know. Oh man, you shouldn't have killed your best friend. You could have joined us. Right? Uh, true. <laughs> Damn, son. Hey, Nick, if I see him casting a spell, I will pull out my staff and try to steal it. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. That's a great fucking, that's a great uh, were, were, was anyone else going to try and stop that? There's I was no. going to suggest well, that I, I mean, he fly had, in, but... Yeah, well, I don't know if there's enough time for you to, and also he has yeah. protection. Like, if someone tried to volley, he's he's got meat shields. So I think, Merrick, this is the only... The, your Yours is the only yeah. option here. Um, so... We have added a move to your sheet called the Archveiler's Staff. Um, as you see this spell pre being prepared to be cast, um, and as you see him finishing the spell, uh, he points a hand into the air, and there is orange, rusty colored energy emitting from his hand. Uh, go ahead and um, roll the Archveiler's Staff. When you observe a spell being cast, uh, or the effect of a spell, you may attempt to steal the spell with the staff. Roll plus intelligence. You may only store three spells at a time. So, you got a partial success. You are able to cast the spell in the future or manipulate it now. Choose one of these tags. The spell does not have additional unwanted effects. The spell is enhanced in some way that you describe when used. You do not draw unwanted attention. So, are you stealing it or... Or are you manipulating? Well, I, I don't think you even know what the spell is right now. Right. Is there a way for me to know? Uh, so this is just going to be... Um, it's not a spell in the book. Uh, a lot of okay. a lot of my NPCs are going to have spells that are just one-offs or, or unique. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, he's casting Firework. Like, oh. he, he is attempting to signal that something is going on here. Um... And this orange energy begins to shoot up into the air, and you just draw it into the staff, and it does not make it very high and very bright. Um, okay. Or, if you want to let it keep going but change the spell, like that is what he was trying to do. 
I mean, can I send it crashing back down on top of his face? Ooh, yeah. I like this. That's um, what I would love to do. I like him. This. Give me one moment here. Oh, you know what? I know it's I know what spell this is. Uh, go ahead and cast Fireball. Roll two d six for us. Yes, please. I would please. love to roll two d six for you. There's seven da seven points and of damage. Armor. Uh, okay, and wait, four. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, so then you need to choose one of these spell or one of the tags before we do this. Do you choose the spell does not have additional unwanted effects? The spell is enhanced in some way that you describe when used. And, or you do not draw unwanted attention. I would love to enhance the spell in the way that the fireworks come back and catch his robes on fire. Am I allowed to do that? Yes, roll an additional d6, please. Love it. Eight. One. chance that it'll <laughs> catch his, uh, his meat shields on fire as well? Uh, that is exactly what you needed to kill all three of these. Oh nice. my gosh. Nice. Uh, so... Uh, you ex like brother bronze just goes up and you just sort of like nope and it, it, it just like erupts around his hand um his hand explodes uh and then like it's just a big bright flash Ooh. um all of the undead that are running towards you just fall over uh <clears throat> good job love it fucking anime queen well done. yes I will, look, I will look at the staff for a bit <laughs> I think you gotta like Infinite strike a dramatic power. Go full on He Man, just like above yeah, your head. Yeah, like, yes. Right. I'm happy in the moment, but if this is the power of Veil, I think you see a sullen look come across Merrick's face. Don't overthink it. We're winning. And then I'm just gonna run ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like right. Basil would be like, just fucking enjoy the moment. Let's go. All right. Let's go to the town. <laughs> And we cut to... Yeah, so you all note that there are other... other groups of, like, these these kind of platoons of undead, as well as Rust Brothers controlling them, peppered mm -hmm. around the perimeter of the city. Um, and as you draw closer, you can see even more of them. There, there are more Rust Brothers than I think you would feel comfortable fighting. Like, there is an army here, a small army. And you haven't even seen any Iron Brothers, and they are, again, like, the military arm. Those those dudes are jacked. Um, but you approach the city, um, the southern gate, really. Um, meanwhile, uh, John, as Wick is approaching the city, he is seeing the same thing. How do you think he would handle this? Uh... Well, he wanted to change his spells, so kind of like Qui-Gon Jinn having to, uh, uh, preparing to die, truly, uh, he would meditate for like 45 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. erase the connections that he had. He needs to uh, murder and kill. <laughs> Okay. So uh, then he would totally just walk in. Uh, probably to this hole first. I don't uh, know. So Wick is also going to run into the same problem where there are his, like squads of undead and rest brothers here. Um, yeah, but, but he is I alone. I am invisible. Ah, okay. Go ahead and cast your spell, please. Right. Perfect. Uh, my sheet just uh, maxima. I need to reopen my fucking there we go alrighty casting a spell please be a success alright it's a, a success uh, well if I draw unwelcome attention to myself and then I become invisible how would that work I will tell you how uh, I say you do it that sounds like fun it would be fun but I don't have the, uh, I need a moment, okay? Yeah. I will forget it immediately. No big deal. It's gone. Okay. Uh, this is what the spell does. I can no longer cast it again. Uh, I'm an ally. 
Right. Can you cast invisibility on yourself? Uh, yes, of course. Okay. I was about to say. Uh, and then I I walk in. Unless they have true sight, I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, no, they do not have true sight. Um, okay. You walk into the city. Well, you walk up to this hole in the ground. And it, it appears mm. as though... Um, like you see evidence that the the army, I'll just call them an army of of rust, um, marched up to the west gate here. Um, and you can see just tons and tons of footprints. Um, and it would appear that they they stood here all together uh, and something dug this tunnel. Um, the all, none of the gates have been like breached. But they appear to be like abandoned because it would appear yeah. that the Rust Brothers entered the city in a different way. Um, so I know how sappers work. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about this tunnel. Yeah. So it's pretty wide. It can accommodate, you know, uh, at least three people wide marching order, um, and there, you know, there's footprints in the in the dirt. Um, you can head on in. There is no one. Uh, I mean, with your invisibility, those guarding it are completely trivialized to you. So there's like no supports or anything to it. No. So I would not be able to bend bars and lift gates to the tunnel. Um. I mean, your theory, your weapon's a like shovel, stick. right? Yeah, I've had shields made of shovel heads yeah yeah i i mean once inside or or even at the entrance i think you could try and do work it's just going to be really risky because you risk a cave-in on yourself true all right fuck it we go in we ignore the tunnel okay uh let uh, me oh yeah go ahead well i'll just break down the gate anyway right huh. <laughs> all right Wick is now in the hollows. He is looking for uh, 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 the resistance. Uh, let me let me tell you what you see here. Yeah, I come out of the tunnel. Uh, you come out of the tunnel. Let me change your token um, and move everyone over to a new map. Whoops, that was the wrong map. This map. Ah. Oh. That looks wow. Cool. Uh, hang on, folks. I think I need to reload the page. Say, I what, how did rat. they all get separated? What? <laughs> oh no. Okay. They forgot mixed unit tactics. Fuck. So, um, <laughs> what you all did not witness is that. The Grey Wardens and City Watch were completely unprepared for a infiltration inside the city. They were prepared to defend the walls against undead. Um, they also were not expecting these variant undead who are acting very professionally and unlike undead typically do. Um, so there are a couple of these uh, Vol creatures um, that are near the end of this tunnel. So as you step out, there is just the sounds of combat. So let me let me also go ahead and change the music. Um, mm. I have Burning Village uh, and let me find a combat. Um, where's my combat playlist? There we go. Uh, so the sounds of con conflict uh, echo in the tunnel as you get about halfway. Um, and as you emerge, you just see skirmishes everywhere. Uh, Rust Brothers and Iron Brothers fighting Grave Wardens and uh, militia members. Uh, there are these Vol-esque looking demons. I only had a rat art asset that have green fur uh, and mouths that look like the Sarlacc pit from Star Wars. They are just munching on people. Um, there are people boarded up in their homes. Um, I mean, you can't even see anybody because they're all cowering within their homes, but uh, it looks like the Rust Brothers are trying to minimize damage to structures and they're focusing on subduing the Grave Wardens. And the streets are littered with, with dead Grave Wardens, militia members, and city guardsmen. Uh, and it looks like 
it looks like the Grave Wardens are losing here. Um, you spot... Oh, yeah, they're losing. They're all spread out. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we gotta reorganize the battlefield, boys. Fuck. Um, it looks like it's really fucking dangerous to be here. I'm a fighter. Yes, John. But you what are kinda? one. You are one man. Uh, hey, it's been an hour since people got shot. Maybe you know the other boys coming from the south snuck in and are hidden somewhere on rooftops. Who knows? Wick doesn't, because he's not going to take. Well, he could discern realities while invisible. <laughs> you could. Uh. And I would count this yeah. as as uh, for seeing red. Because this is this okay. is combat. Uh, this is what seeing red does, everybody. Oh, plus one to this. I will do plus one forward. That is a six, John. That's no, it's a six. no, it's a five. It is a five. Oh, did you? Because he has minus yeah. one wisdom. Oh, yeah. is the plus one forward? Seeing I red. I just rolled a three, Chief. Yeah. The roll. Oh my God. All right. Okay. Um, I don't see what's happening. Yeah. I don't know who's in control. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, I think you take a moment to survey the battlefield. Um, and you see uh, this individual right over here, um, Iron Brother Bishop. He looks oh! to, to be the meanest, baddest dude here. Um, and if you all remember the letter that we found in I, uh, Rust, or Brother Rook on Brother Rook, the big beetle dude that we've slain, uh, it was a letter from Iron Brother Bishop. Um, this is this is that dude, and he he is in full rust, uh, full plate mail that is rust colored. Um, he has a massive massive shield, uh, like a like a tower shield, uh, and just a giant ass blade. Uh, not quite the Grand Diclave that um, Brother Rook had, um, but he also has um, this mask on that looks like a wolf's face. Um, and he is just cutting down people left and right. Um, he uh, cuts down a Grave Warden, takes a step back, uh, and he like looks over in your direction very suddenly. Wait, he notices me just immediately? He oh. doesn't look at you directly, but he looks in your direction. Uh, and he, like, sh takes a moment and sheaths his sword, and he begins to reach out a hand in your direction. Um, and Wait, he's in a combat situation from here. Walks 20 feet to me, and is like, I'm gonna touch you. He's, he's, he's not walking towards you, he's just stepping in your direction. And he is... Oh. He has noticed something. Cool. Uh, I see uh, if he oh, tracks me. Oh, real quick. Uh, the blade he has, it is the Moss family blade. Yeah, I know. I know okay. who this guy is. This motherfucker stabbed me. I'm going to assassinate him, Nick. I'm okay. going to chop his head off when he's not looking. Mm -hmm. oh, but is he looking at me? He's looking in your a... direction. Okay, well, when I move, does he follow me? Uh, no, but he is, he is uh, casting a spell. Um, and I'm gonna need you to make a some sort of defy danger check. Um, I would love to do an invisible barrel roll out of the way. All right, give me a defy danger dex as he tries to detect you with magic. Okay. Uh, not even close. You slip out of the way uh, undetected. Uh, his... can, I, can I sneak up behind him, please? Uh, you can get close. Yeah. There is like a pulse that goes out from his hand, kind of like sonar, and you manage to like duck over here behind like this wall uh, and just miss the effect. Um, he then returns to to the sword, pulls it out, and cuts down another grave warden. Jesus Christ! Uh, well, I want to assassinate him. You're not the thief. Yeah, but I'm invisible and his backs to me okay right um yes he's the biggest guy if he goes down the other living dudes will like 
hesitate for a moment, mm -hmm. giving our Grave Wardens the opportunity to regroup. Okay, is just... What Wick believes. Uh, you're invisible. The spell persists until, until the target attacks or you dismiss the effect. Okay, so when you attack, you will break invisibility. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh. Let me be super clear. This dude's armor looks like the nicest shit you have ever seen. Guys, Nick is uh, hinting at me that I cannot kill this man in one hit. Uh, I mean... Does... Does I, he look like he has 23 hit points, too? <laughs> I, it's possible you kill him. It's po it's it's also possible you don't. But you, you're you invisible. You snuck in. He he did not detect you. Um, so really quickly, um, for the rest of you, you all come upon the gate, uh, the south gate, and it is locked. Uh, and... Other groups of undead and those Rust Brother platoons have probably taken note of you, but you have the speed and distance to get in. Um, are you are you just using cacophony to like fly over the wall, mm. or are you trying to like bust down the gate? I would think I would pull in out of reach into my pack and pull some rope. Mm -hmm. From my adventure gear. You have a gear. flying creature. Just I know. I'm handed hand, hand to cacophony, and she can take it up to the edge and either carry us up or we can climb up it. Okay. Excellent. Can she carry me and all my armor? Oh, probably not. But yeah, she can set a rope. That was for my you. thinking. Okay. Setting a rope would allow me to get over. She would probably carry Basil, and Chives can probably scamper Definitely up. Definitely carry wall. Chives. 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 Chives no, can leap tall buildings in a single bound. To, yeah, he doesn't need to be carried if if the the wall is is half a degree off of being ninety degrees, he can climb it. So if there is a sliver of wood sticking out, he can hop yeah, on it and bounce. <laughs> all right. Um, so you all make it over the building, and as um, Wick is closing in on Iron Brother Bishop, uh, you you notice them uh, creeping over the wall and engaging into the fray. Um, so I will move you all up. Hey. What a mess. Right. Are we... Stealthy undeads. Uh... Yeah, yes. Are, so... Is this scene abstracted right now? Yes, is this is of... very abstracted. Okay. Uh, we are not playing out this entire fight. Thank you. Uh, that's what I needed to know. Uh, yeah, so I see them they will see me here in a second, but uh, I more or less just want to attack this man. Uh, okay. In the like side where the armor is weak. Can I look to see where his armor is weak? I don't know. Uh, if that would did, give me a did you benefit. get all your discern realities questions? Because maybe one of them can be where is this armor? Oh, weak? true. Yeah. Well, Never you mind. failed the discern realities yeah. role. Oh, oh, you uh, failed it. Never mind. Well, I failed looking at the battle making sense of it, not him specifically. Uh, I mean, you can study him specifically and try and discern realities again, if you like. There you go. Oh, no, that was Defy Danger. Oh, Sir, yeah, I didn't. So much reality. I'm discerning realities, Nick. I need to know if this does anything in combat. <laughs> yeah, yes. All right. Uh, what... I guess what here is useful or valuable to me? Specifically useful in how to stab this man in the heart, preferably? The realities of his armor. Yeah, tell me the realities of his armor, Nick. He's yeah. gotta have a wink. A wink. It's made out of rust, man. It can't be fully... <laughs> Make an excellent oh, point I hate there. this move. So... There, he is like their their most experienced soldier and their most well equipped. There's not going to be like, I mean, you know, there's going to be like some like under the pits or like there's there's a few spots you you could you could definitely go yeah. for, like in the gorget or gorge if we're feeling French. Sure, um, so so like That's waiting for a perfect moment, um, you could you could certainly try and make a strike. But this dude's form is perfect. He doesn't leave a lot of openings. Um, he looks like he is made for mass combat. Like, 
messy. He is he is his form is just It sounds like unmatched. he's tired then. <laughs> he's been going. No. Um and here's the thing. It sounds like he's not a good duelist. <laughs> no. You you even see him take a couple of hits um and look like he's a little worn down, but as some of the undead are being cut down by grave wardens around, you see the sword um what color is this sword or or what like this is your family sword is there like anything you you pictured or had in mind like any particular features no okay i assume it's some weapon okay so probably two edged yeah it is it is two edged and i think it is like an iridescent blue like a like a moon blue um, and it be- begins to glow a little bit every time an undead nearby dies. Uh, and he seems to, like, recover as as undead near him die. Okay. Well, I don't think I can just chop off his hand Anakin Skywalker style. Mm. Um, because I don't think that is actually a thing in this game. Uh... So yeah, I go to where he's weakest. I have, I mean, all the time in the world to line this up, basically. Mm -hmm. And I, a fighter, also built for mass combat. And also, a whirlwind, a whirling dervish, if you will, can find that right opportunity to stab my blade through his armpit or in his neck. Okay. What do you want from me? Um... I want a strength check. A strength check? Yes. Oh. Boom. Or wait, I'm sorry, your weapon uses dex? Yeah, it's a dex. I'm sorry, give me a dex That's check. A... You can reroll. Okay. All right. I mean, I'd prefer the other numbers so okay. that become a... Uh, uh, <laughs> and that should have a plus one from the discern realities, so we'll take a nine. Uh, which doesn't matter. Um, it would have mattered. <laughs> we could have taken the two fours. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Tell me what happens on a nine, Nick. Uh, you deal your damage, and there is a consequence. I will consider what the consequence is. Uh, ignores two armor, if that matters. Ooh. What else are you carrying? Uh, just weapons and my armor. What is your armor? Uh, scale mail, made of shovel heads. Okay. Uh, so, how do you attack Iron Brother Bishop? You just go in for one of these like small weak points. And then we just yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you go in from behind, you hit him. Am I looping? Um, sorry, I I'm just trying to figure out exactly how to how to paint a picture. Um, yeah. So you go in, you hit him, and he it, like on instinct reacts and like bl- blocks your next hit, uh, and he just slashes across uh, your your armor, uh, damaging it. Uh, your armor takes a minus one penalty moving forward. Cool. Um, uh, I am clearly visible now, but yeah. I do not uh, have the. We aren't monologuing. We fight to the death. Yeah, he like he instinctively swings around and he like he doesn't even see you, but slashes through your armor and then he takes like the shield defensive posture. You begin to materialize and he just smirk. Oh, I don't know if you could see it behind uh, his mask, but he just like gives a little bit of a laugh and says, "We fight to the death." I no monologuing. I yell at him. Okay. Um. So the rest of you, you are met with just this unseemly sight of grave wardens being slaughtered left and right. They are losing the battle quickly, uh, and suddenly Wick appears ahead of you. Um, I just want to be very plain. If you all hang around this fight too long, like, Grave Wardens are all going to die and they're going to just turn on you. 
I'm going to heavily stress not sticking around too long. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll say aim aim for the brothers. They're obviously we they're we take out the brothers. We take out the dead. So I'm gonna. I don't think we should split up. Split up. But I'm going to head over in this direction. Like, behind the Grave Warden. Can I get up, like, on top of the rooftop? I want to get over to where... Yeah, you're like, a selfie. The, you totally this... We're just on the wall, aren't we? So yeah. High up already. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to cross some rooftops, and I want to I wanna be, like, on top of this dude, and I want to... Assassinate him. Yes, I really do. I want to assassinate him. Okay. Um, you've got to move for this, yeah? This right. is... So, yeah. Uh, this is backstab. So, when you attack a surprised or defenseless enemy with a melee weapon, you can choose to deal your damage or roll decks for sick options. What would you like to do as you just, like, Assassin's Creed style drop down from the rooftop and just knife this guy? I just guy. want to roll damage. I don't want to take the chance of getting... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just gonna so 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 it's cheap shot, so it's that plus an additional one D eight. Uh yes, your er your backstab deals an extra one D six thanks to cheap shot. Um so yeah, go ahead and roll class damage and then roll an extra D six on top of that. my damage. That's a 7, and then, and then a d6. 1, All 8. Alright, you drop down on Brother Dolman, um, and you just, like, stick your claws uh, beh like, underneath his chain shirt, into his neck, uh, even though he's got, like, a hood on, you you know the chain shirt's there, and you just dig in, and he lets out a, like, a, just a horrid scream uh, as you um, cut into him. He doesn't quite die, um, but uh, he is gravely wounded. Uh, meanwhile, the Iron Brother next to him uh, turns uh, and, like commands the undead to finish off the Grave Warden over here while he his attention is drawn towards you. I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stay latched in to the brother and like hold him up in front of me to use as like a shield in the meantime <laughs> while I continue to dig into him. So um, you can operate him Ratatouille style. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's my little meat puppet is what he is. Okay. Um, what is your exit strategy or, or are you staying here to fight? No, well, exit strategy is going to be so that I'll have to do like a defy danger, but I'm going to head back up to the fucking rooftop and just like vanish. I'm going to pull a Batman and whoosh the fuck out of there. Okay. Uh, give me a defy danger dex, please, as you try and use this body as a blocking mechanism to make your escape. Well, I mean, I'm not going to fly off with him, but like I'm going to like hold him yeah. up in front of me. Yeah. Until, yeah. Or push him forward or something. Something, right? Um, yes. Okay, so defy danger, Dex. Perfect. <laughs> uh, you shove Brother Dolman towards Brother Maple, who just like cuts through him, uh, trying to get at you. He doesn't give a shit about it, this Rust brother, uh, but you manage just barely by an inch to slip uh, slip away and make it back to the rooftop. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my my raven-like qualities mm -hmm. to blend seamlessly into this like background, and I, it, I'm gonna be under the cover of night. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I am the night. I am the bat. The so. sun has fallen at this point, uh, so you you hide in the shadows. Uh, Merrick and Basil, there are two grave wardens just being overwhelmed by undead in front of you. They are they are about to die. What um, is turn on? What do you do? They're being uh, attacked by undead. Yes. Uh, can I get up on this roof? Sure. All right. Because um, 
uh, not to play the acceptable losses card, but like we've got to take out the brothers. We can't waste our time with, with, the, with the individual undeads right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so Chives and I, like, uh, as as if they were swift feet across rocky crags, uh, run across the rooftops and similarly uh, drop Assassin's Creed style down on Brother Grave. Okay. Brother Kappa. All right. Side by side. This is with your blades out? Uh, yes. The two short swords are out. And five skull and horns first. Okay. Give me a, um, a defy danger dex to leap off uh, at the proper time and land right on Brother Grave. Okay. Um, I think you're going to take just like two damage from falling here um but go ahead and roll your damage on brother grave okay so two damage hang on a second that's not that damage does not interact with armor right no this is like just dropping down from a rooftop right on all right uh so there's damage okay uh it should be a plus one with chives and then uh uh, Viper Strike with the second short uh, handheld weapon. I think that does an extra D4. Uh, I think it's D6. Let's see here. Oh, you're right. It's D4. Oh. Oh. All right, so five damage. Uh, do you have any piercing with those swords? Magic I weapon. I don't think so. Not what that was. So it's close. Okay. All right, so uh, you slash Brother Grave, uh, and he turns uh, to face you. Uh, it was not a lethal blow. Uh, right. Brother Brother Kava is focused on this Grave Warden here. Um, so every time someone takes like a turn and we, we pivot the camera around, I'm going to kill a Grave Warden on this screen. And that is that is a ticking clock. Damn. All right, Merrick. One, two. Three, you are you are muted. Seven, eight. Sorry. Uh, the grave warden's in front of me. Which one looks the worst for the wear? Uh, this guy on the left has like six six undead, like literally overbearing him. Uh, meanwhile, the grave warden on the right has a, like a, a special selkie that is really on top of him, but he's only got three to deal with. Right. Um, do we see any undead drop over here when Brother Dolmer, Dolman died? Uh, yes, a, a few. A Oops. few? Okay. Go ahead and delete a couple. All right, I've got to trust my, my damaged peeps to do their job. And I'm going to try to keep as many Grave Wardens alive as I can until I get a chance to help Wick. So I'm going to move up right next to this guy, shoulder to shoulder, and try to push back the undead as I reach over to his side where he has been wounded and try to cast a spell. Okay. And when I do so, I'm going to drop magic weapon so that I'm not getting a negative benefit. Sure. You already don't. You have serenity. Okay. Well, then I, I'm, I'm going to drop it anyway because eventually I'm going to be casting something else that will need it. Okay. All right, so I will cast a spell. Yeah, go ahead and cast your spell. Perfect. Um, I'm going to cast... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nick. And go ahead and give me a, like, defy danger strength just to kind of, like, shove back all the undead. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. For this this moment and opportunity. Um, okay, so you're going to take some damage, uh, but you do manage to reinvigorate the Grave Warden here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cast uh, Cure Moderate Wounds. Nice. How much Which, does that do? No. Uh, it's going to be 2d8, plus I now have the Devoted Healer feat, which is this here, which I add my level to the damage healed on level oh. 4. Oh, nice. So he's going to get 2d4 plus... He's going to get... Jesus. He's going to get 15 health back. I'm going to fully... I imagine almost fully reinvigorate him, but I will take some damage. Kind of uh, yes. maybe to first stall one of the grave wardens from dying on my turn, maybe. Yeah, yeah, this this will definitely help here. Uh, so you'll take nine damage. Um, minus armor. 
minus armor. Okay. Um, and that's just because they're like I rolled a, a couple or I added a couple extra because sure. to represent that there's many of them. Um, but you kind of put yourself between yourself and the grave warden. You he- reach out and heal him, uh, and quickly he is just like shoving his shovel into the head of an undead that is like right on top of you. Uh, and he's like, "Thanks. Oh my god, it'll be a miracle if we make it through this." Yeah, no shit. Hold strong. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does he kill anything? Oh yeah, yeah. He he cuts do down. Do any a... of these grave <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean they're they doing good, but like I'm not. I wasn't gonna about. I wasn't about to just paint this entire right, right. battle map with hundreds of tokens. So we hear you. Um. Okay. Uh. So Wick, you are facing off with Iron Brother Bishop, um, and he looks like a fucking menace. Yeah, I realize this is impossible. Uh, does that change anything in Wood's mind? Uh, how much piercing do you have, by the way? I have two piercing. Okay. Uh, did he even take damage? Uh, I mean, you I have piercing, it? so yeah. Well, does he look hurt at all? Or is he, you know... Uh, a little bit. a flesh wound! A little bit, yeah. But not, not a great deal. Okay. I can't do this on my own. Wick is going to do some sick card wheel or cartwheeling ninja shit to get disengaged from this. Okay. Uh, give me a defy danger dex to disengage yeah. with Iron Brother Bishop. Stay away from nerd. Okay. Uh, um, when when you hesitate for a moment, I mean, he was kind of standing there for a moment, like kind of watching you and studying you. When does Wick hesitate, Nick? Um. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but he studies you for a moment, and then he just comes in relentlessly. But you're able to, like, block, 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 block. And he cu- keeps coming in, coming in, coming in. And as he's swinging at you, you notice, once again, like, undead are dying around him. And the, like, the wound you gave him heals up. Um, this okay. this Moss family blade is going to keep him going in this fight indefinitely unless you can, like, decapitate him. And even then, who knows what this blade is capable of. Uh, but there is, I think, a moment where one of these these demon um, voles, like, kind of, like, as you're back, kind of backpedaling, trying to look for an out, uh, one of them kind of just, like, sweeps a tail around and kind of disrupts Iron Brother Bishop's flow, and that's your moment. You break away. Okay. I scooch all the way here and uh, I don't know. I want to rally all the Grave Wardens to me so that we can actually make a unified front or break out. Mm. Uh, What do you want from that? Uh, Is it impossible? Is this a non thing that can happen? What are you trying to call out to them and and ask them to do? (laughs) Well, Two, rally up! <laughs> I don't know, fuck. Uh, literally come to me so we can go this way and go out the fucking west gate. Uh, give me, give me defy danger charisma. Okay. Seems about right. Ten. Nice. Uh, you call out on me, everyone. Uh, and I think, I think, you know, we're getting kind of low on time here, so I think this is kind of a good place to start to... Um, conceptualize and extrapolate a little bit. The fighting continues. Cacophony is just dipping and diving in, cutting people down. Um, Merrick is hol- keeping Grave Wardens going um, as, as much as he can, um, making difficult decisions of who to go heal um, and try and protect while letting others fall. Uh, Chives and Basil uh, fight with brother uh, Rust Brothers and, and take them out um, while, you know, blade dancing um and as you call out um and all of this is going on many of the grave wardens uh managed to like back up and position themselves kind of in the central square with you um and everyone rallies up um but there is there are a lot of enemies and and everyone is y'all are kind of surrounded um and at one point iron brother bishop uh, there's there's this tense moment where 
The Grey Wardens are surrounded, but they're in that kind of like 300 style. Everyone's got their shields. Um, and, and the unity has made it more difficult to cut them all down. Um, but there doesn't appear to be a way out uh, unless like there is an order given. But there's this tense moment yeah. where all of the undead and, and Rust Brothers and Iron Brothers kind of back up and give you all some space. Uh, an Iron Brother Bishop calls out to you and says, Well, Wick Moss, what'll it be? Uh, I don't talk to him. I, I can mm -hmm. cast Fireball and blow us a path free. What I need is someone to tell me where we're going. All of the great wardens. I don't know that the South Gate has been actually cleared of enemies. No, I don't even know if the South Gate is clear because there are enemies closing in on us. We might, we might blast our way to a gate, but we'll have to blast our way out of okay. the blockade. They're not innumerable. <laughs> right? Right. Yes. They have been fighting for over an hour after sieging this town for a day. There has to be one of these sides that are weaker than the rest. And that's the side we go to. The fireball will go off and we will all make a mad dash to escape. Let's Wouldn't it south. just be the direction that we just came from? That yep, we, go yeah, yeah. Let's okay. let's. Okay. Uh, uh, we cut our path south. I will cast fireball if you want. All right. Yeah. Give me your spell. Okay. All of the cast grave is... wardens are, you know, holding the line, looking to you. Oh boy. Um, and you're Merrick, like, steal my spell. <laughs> Ooh, can I? Yeah. Uh. I think that that would be dishonest to, like, you, John's failed role. Girl. Does uh, John blow us all up, Nick? Does this uh, fireball go off in all of our faces? Uh, Whatever. We cut our way out. <laughs> John. Like, all right, I thought I could be cool. Mark XP. I will. <laughs> um, I already have, truly. Oh, boy. What does a three represent here? Let me look at my list. It oh boy. Says that, no, that maintains <laughs> the spell fails. That's what it does. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think it does. I. I mean, a failed roll doesn't necessarily mean like that the action doesn't happen. It just means that what you're trying to achieve fails. So I think you like you're like that way, and you cast fireball. It blows up a ton of undead. Uh, some of the Grave Wardens start, like, charging that way, and just more undead filter in. The ones that were chasing Merrick, Basil, and Cacophony decided, like, those Rust Brothers decided to, to go in after oh. them. So, they, they, like, it's a Hydra head. There's twice as many undead there. Some of the Grave Wardens that started rushing that way get cut down. And oh. Iron Brother Bishop calls out, Stand down. You all don't have to die. I don't know if we're going to be captured. Do we make our way for the hole and try and bust our way out the hole? Oh, yeah. How, is not, if that's how they got in, then, like... I mean, we might be uh... trapped between undead on either side, but it's better than surrendering to these assholes. Wick, I cannot do do? be captured. So, I think we should take a break here. Yes, I think this might be a good place to stop for tonight. Cliffhanger. Yeah. So, um, we will we will find out just exactly how you all get through or out of this situation next time. Okay. Will we? Mm. We'll, we'll find out. Mm. Um. So, um, great job, everybody. That was mm. that was um. That was a lot. Um. A lot happened. Um, Holy shit. Any, I, right. I don't even know what to say. Cut any, us out, Nick. Just take okay. us home. So um, thank you everyone for watching Fable Table. Um, we've, we've really enjoyed having you here today. Does anyone have any like plugins they want to give or anything for the good of the order before we head out for tonight? Shadow, when is your next tournament game? My next tournament race is going to be tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. I believe that I am racing... Let me see which channel is it. 
I'll have to look to see if I can figure out which channel it is, but I'll be racing on either Dragon Warrior Randomizer channel or RPG Limit Break. Nice. See if nice. they've scheduled it for us yet. Nice. The internet is moving slowly. This is a, this particular week is the, yeah, they don't have it scheduled for us yet. This particular week, week is a specialty seed where we do not have to actually kill the end boss of the game. So we literally rescue the princess, walk up to the end boss, say, hey, what's up? And then we all hang out together for all eternity. So we don't, <laughs> the idea is it's the three's company flag set. So in other words, you all hang out oh. with the dragon lord in his castle. And that's how you end the game. The idea yeah. being you don't have to get super strong and super healthy to be able to kill him. You just have to be able to get to him. Mm. With the princess in hand. So, should be fun. Should be either quick or horrible. One of the two. All right. Andy, how's your number of the day going? Uh, 36 days of type is good. We're halfway through. R was just posted today. Uh, check out hashtag 36 days of type on your uh, local Instagram. Mm. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw it during the break. It looks really good. Shannon, where can we find you? Nowhere. I don't want to be found. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm John Dungeon Master. I get mad at mechanics. Come watch me every day of the week until Sunday, which is my day off. Uh, and I am Apollo Nick. Uh, this has been Fable Table. If you like the show, you can subscribe on Twitch or on our Patreon. Uh, feel free to drop even a buck uh, for, for one week. Uh, every little bit helps. Um, and definitely subscribe on YouTube where we post all the videos. My schedule for posting videos is going to start to like be a little delayed because now I'm driving to work twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and my commute is two hours each way. Um, so if you notice me getting a little more tired and flustered, um, that's because I have I am now driving a lot more than I have been. So. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, stop by the Discord. Let us know of what you thought of the episode. Drop your, your theories of how they're going to get out of, you know, this mess uh, next week. Um, so we'll see you. We'll see you next Wednesday for so, for some more Song of the Ravenlands. Have a good night, everyone. Ooh. Hi. Mm -hmm.